Hi, my name is Abby. I'm an animal care specialist here at the San Antonio Zoo, and I am also one of our animal ambassadors. So what that means is I am part of a team that works very closely with several animal species, ranging from our biggest Burmese pythons to our smallest uh, emperor scorpions. And we're able to take those animals out into the public and do really awesome events, such as outreach, school events, and things of that nature. So we are able to take those animals out, and they're not always available on exhibit for the public to see. So we have a really awesome um, Facebook Live event for you guys today. We're gonna give you guys a chance to be able to see some of our awesome ambassadors. Since you guys can't come to us, we're gonna come to you guys. So this is Jean. Now Jean is our blue tongue skink, and she's absolutely gorgeous. So blue tongue skinks are gonna be Australia natives, and they are going to be um, eaters of quite a bunch of different uh, variety of things. These guys will eat insects, uh, flowers. These guys uh, are very well known for that uh, blue tongue skink as they are named for that blue, blue tongue. Uh, so that blue tongue is actually going to be a form of defense for these guys. So when they are threatened or they feel threatened by a larger maybe would-be predator, they're going to stick out that blue tongue and they're going to make a loud hissing noise. And that usually wards off anything that might consider these guys a tasty snack. So these guys uh, have scales that are going to be made out of keratin. So very similar to what makes up our fingernails and our hair as well. So for the, those of you at home who don't get the chance to touch Jean today, you can go ahead and touch the backs of your fingernails and know exactly what she feels like. So these guys can live uh, up to 20 years. In fact, Jean is 20 right now and is likely to live even longer since she is under the uh, care of our wonderful animal staff. These guys are also really cool because they um, can detach their tail when they're threatened. So very similar to some of the lizards that we do have native here in Texas that some of us are familiar with. These guys can detach that tail when they are threatened by a would-be predator. Alrighty, so if we can move on to our next animal ambassador. This is Twig, and Twig is our eastern screech owl. So I don't know if you guys got the chance to see our social media post earlier about our eastern screech owl, but now you guys have the chance to see him now live and in person. So these guys are native to Texas. You can find them here in your backyard, but you do have to look really, really closely for them. They are gonna be nocturnal, so they do spend most of the day asleep, and they're going to be up and awake and hunting at night. So while he is asleep during the day, he's gonna stay really well camouflaged with those really, really pretty feathers. Now he's gonna hang out in really tall trees, usually holes in trees as well, and those camouflaged feathers are gonna keep him well hidden from any other birds, or any other would-be predators that might consider him a tasty snack during the day. And at night is when he is going to come out to hunt. Now Twig also eats a variety of things. He's also going to eat insects as well, but some of his favorite things are going to be smaller rodents such as mice. Now Twig is going to be excellent for hunting. He is built to hunt despite being incredibly cute. He is well adapted to hunting at night. So he's got those really, really big eyes up there. If he turns his head, there he is. Now what's cool about those eyes is that they are going to focus forward always. He's actually got a really thin uh, layer of bone around his eyes and he can only face his eyes forward. He cannot move his eyes around in his head like we can, but he does make up for that by being able to turn his head about 275 degrees in either direction. So it's a myth that these guys can turn their head all the way around. So not quite all the way around, but pretty close. Now he's also got some really, really sharp talons down there. He's gonna use those to grab and hold on to any would-be prey items. Now a cool fact about Twig is that these feet are called zygodactyl, which means that he's got two toes in the front and then two toes in the back, and that's gonna give him a really awesome extra grip on anything that he might catch. So those really pretty camouflage feathers are also well adapted for his hunting. They are uh, fringed at the ends, which means that they uh, allow for silent flight, which is a really, really cool trait among all owl species. That's going to allow him to sneak up on things that have really good hearing, such as mice, which are going to be some of his favorite snacks. Can you tell us again what kind of owl Twig is? Twig is an eastern screech owl. And these guys, like I said earlier, they are native to Texas. You can find them in your backyard. Twig is actually uh, from a rescue center, a rehabilitation center here in Texas. He came to us um, about 15 to 16 years ago, I believe in 2004, 
And now he's an ambassador for his species. What kind of noise do screech owls make? So they are called screech owls, but these guys tend to make an almost uh, hissing or purring noise. He doesn't do it too often, and in fact, we haven't heard uh, him make an incredibly loud noise very recently. Um, but in the wild, it's very, very distinctive. Uh, usually you'll be able to tell the call of an eastern screech owl from any other um, owls that are native to this region. Are those his ears? So, on top of his head? those are not his ears, although they do look like his ears when we are facing him. His ears are actually going to be on the sides of his head. So it'd be kind of hard for me to point out, but they're going to be down here. And in fact, on the other side, it's likely that his ear is not at the same level. It's either going to be higher or lower on the other side. Also, a very common trait in owls, it helps better triangulate or better allow for them to find or hear their prey at night. <laughs> a few people are asking, how long can eastern screech owls live? Uh, so usually in the wild, it's going to be anywhere from maybe 10 to even 15 years. Uh, Twig is in his mid to late teens. Like I said, he did come to us from a rehabilitation center, so it's hard to know for sure exactly how old he is. However, since he uh, does live here under the care of our wonderful animal care staff, it is very likely that we uh, can care for him for quite a few more years, which we're really excited about. And it might be hard to tell while well, he's on Kara's glove, but how big is he? Um, so I want to say like for most adults, if you make maybe a fist size, he's only going to be a little bit taller than that. So these guys are smaller species, but in fact, they're not even the smallest species of owl out there. How much does he weigh? Uh, so Twig's last weigh was probably somewhere around 140 grams. So he's incredibly light. Um, Owl species and most birds of prey species, most bird species, in fact, have hollow bones. So they are not going to weigh very much at all, and that does allow them for better flight. Alrighty, so we're going to move on to our next animal ambassador. And these guys happen to be one of our favorites. So this is one of our emperor scorpions. So these guys are going to be an African native species. You're not going to find these guys here in your backyard. Luckily for us. So these guys are one of the largest species of scorpion. So one of my favorite uh, questions that we do get about our scorpion species, especially the ones that we are able to bring out with our animal ambassador team, is a lot of people ask us why they don't sting us. So if you check out that uh, stinger there in the back, he does have a stinger. These guys are venomous, so not poisonous. Clear distinction, poisonous is when you bite it and you get sick. Venomous is when they bite or sting you and then you get sick. So we actually handle these guys almost every day. They're incredibly used to being handled by our animal care staff. And we're especially trained to know when these guys are uncomfortable because that was pretty much the only reason that they would use that stinger. It's far more likely that they're gonna use those pretty powerful pinchers up there first to let us know if they were uncomfortable, which isn't super likely. But it is also uh, good to note that a uh, good rule of thumb with most scorpion species is the larger or the rounder the pinchers, then the less potent the venom. So they're going to use those pinchers up front to grab and hold on to their prey versus using a more potent venom. And actually one of my other favorite facts about scorpions is those pinchers are actually modified mouth parts. So they're not extra limbs, they're parts of their mouth. So another cool fact about these guys is that they do glow under UV light, usually a green or purple. Now, it's not well documented why these guys glow under a black light. In fact, it is still a pretty uh, common topic of research for most scientists. But it looks really, really cool. Do all types of scorpions glow like this? I believe so. In fact, I think uh, if you take a black light, usually for us out into your backyard at night, you'll be able to find scorpions that way. Why is he so hairy? Why is he so hairy? So he uses those bristles to help sense his environment. Usually it's going to be things that walk by him or walk close to him that he's going to be able to reach out and grab and then hopefully eat. Are they related to any other types of creepy crawlies? Um, so these guys are uh, not considered insects. They're going to be arthropods. So they're going to be in that same family. They're going to be related to uh, other things that have 
about eight legs. So I'm sure you, a couple of you can guess what that is gonna be. Andrea would like to know, how do we train the scorpions? <laughs> Well, so we do handle these guys every day. They're incredibly used to being handled by our animal care staff. Um, so we don't necessarily do a training with these guys per se, although I'm sure that is entirely possible with these guys. Um, we usually handle them every day. That way they're used to coming out with us and being uh, around uh, the public, usually in uh, spaces and events that we do do with our animal ambassador species. And that way these guys are pretty much prepared for anything. Uh, emperor scorpions are also an incredibly docile species. A lot of people actually keep these guys as pets because they have such a pretty uh, even keeled, calm nature. What do we feed them here at the zoo? What do we feed them? So these guys like crickets and that's going to be some of their favorite things to eat. They'll usually get about two or three crickets about once a week. Myra wants to know how many babies can they have? I want to say that scorpions can have uh, over a hundred, maybe more at a time. And in fact, uh, baby scorpions are called scorplings, which I think is really cute. And mom scorpions will tend to carry them on their backs. Do these scorpions ever hibernate? Uh, so we don't actually do a hibernation with these guys. These guys are pretty active all year round. And that makes it really easy for us as the animal ambassador team. That way we are able to get them out year round so that uh, everybody gets the chance to see them. We always like to bring these guys out to events with us. Um, it's always really important to talk about how important they are to the environment. A lot of people think that they're going to be really creepy and crawly and gross. But they're really, really good indicators of an environment's health. If these guys are present in an environment, that means that everything is healthy and going well and just as it should be. Can you tell everyone one more time what type of scorpion this is? Sure, these guys are emperor scorpions. They are African natives, so you are not gonna find these guys in your backyard. You probably will find other Texas native scorpions, which are gonna be cousins to these guys. Does this one have a name? A uh, Drogo. Somebody wants to know if we've ever been pinched by scorpions. Uh, a few of us have, but it's not incredibly hard. They usually let us know when they're not super into being handled at the moment, which again, our animal care staff is uh, trained to understand the body language of these guys and to know whether or not they're even interested in being handled that day because of course we don't want to force them to do anything that they're not into that day so sometimes they will gently nudge us on our fingers with those pinchers um, but usually it's not something that's going to be incredibly hard or painful they're just letting us know that they're not really into being held how big is he can we show just a size comparison um maybe a iphone comparison oh, there we go Yes, yeah, about the size of an iPhone 8. Myra would like to know how you all pick their names. <laughs> well, uh, it just depends on Keeper from Keeper. We have a, uh, a system usually, especially when we get new awesome additions to our Animal Ambassador team. We tend to come together and put it to a vote. But it just kind of depends on the Keeper, what kind of uh, name that they throw into the, uh, the ring. Alrighty guys, well thank you for joining us today on our Animal Ambassador Talk. We're so happy to get you guys uh, a little bit more up and close and personal with some of the animals that we don't have on exhibit. Uh, I'd like to take this time to remind you that we do have donations open for you guys if you'd like to go on and follow us on social media. And uh, not only keep up with us, but keep supporting your local zoo. We'd really, really appreciate it to be able to continue to care for these really awesome animal species. Thank you guys so much for coming out today.